Hello, you're very welcome to this week's edition of the Cozy Corner and it gives me great pleasure to introduce a very special guest who has made Longford her home. Karen Tweed, you're very welcome to the Cozy Corner. Thank you very much, Anna. Karen, how did you end up in Longford? Well, it's all to do with love, you know. Yes. It's always the way. And uh, I grew up with a, a fantastic musician called Tom McElvogue, amongst many other great musicians in England. And we were all part of the cultist scene over there, going in for flowers and all that. And we'd meet every year at the All Island Flower and sometimes in flowers over in England. And that was about 35 years ago. And we kind of kept in touch on and off, sent each other cassettes and CDs of various tunes and all that stuff. And Tom moved to Ireland about 21, 22 years ago. And... Uh, he waited 30 years and he asked me out. So that's how it all happened. And he was living in Tarmanbury, so I just moved in here. Oh, that's a lovely story. You know, <laughs> a story of true love. Karen, you have a very, very distinctive style. How did that come about? Well, I had three classical teachers um, playing classical music. And it was very difficult when I was, this is, again, you know, 35, nearly 40 years ago now, when I was first learning. And the accordion was never seen as a serious instrument. So although you could do some kind of classical lessons, you couldn't take it any further. You couldn't go to college or whatever. And my mum was from Ballybunion, County Kerry, and she was quite keen for me to play Irish music. And my first teacher, actually, uh, it was a marching band. Uh, he was called Joe Cole. So he got me into kind of Irish music. And I was in a marching band. And then I went to classical lessons. And then I went to my main teacher, which was a guy called John Whelan, who's a great button accordion player, right. now living in the States. And he, he really revolutionised my music. But before all of that, when I was... that was I started playing the accordion when I was 11. But when I was seven, I had right. a, an interesting and lovely, lovely music teacher at school who was called Ken Davis. He was Welsh. And he really didn't want me to play the piano. So he taught me the melodica. Right. So I started on the melodica, and the melodica, it's the same plane as, as playing a, a piano accordion keyboard. So when I then, my sister got an accordion first, and I saw it, I thought, I've got to have that instrument, because she was older than me, you know, sibling rivalry. Right. And um, You've taken it along. I have, yeah. Shall I play you? Yes, a yes, please. Now, do. they have a terrible reputation of sounding terrible, yes. which they do. And, uh, but they're fantastic for learning tunes, and, they've, and they're a lot lighter than those things. So. Right. As you can hear. So anyway, um, what should we play? Well, I have to say, Karen, that's a first for the Cozy Corner. <laughs> but they're a great instrument because they teach you keyboard skills. Yes. And uh, they teach you breathing and phrasing. Because if you breathe in the wrong places, you lose the tune. And it made me really listen a lot to flute players and pipers and concertina players and listen to where they were taking the breaks in the phrasing, you know. So then you get it on the accordion with the bellows. Yes. Well, speaking of teaching... I first was introduced to you, Karen, down in Limerick. You teach in Mehel, the summer school for students. Um, and I have to say, you had a beautiful orchestral piece which you arranged. That's a few years ago. It is a few years ago. And, and Gary Shannon, who runs it, Fair Play to him, he's, and Ernestine Healy and all the, all the crew down there, they have a fantastic summer school and the kids are absolutely amazing. They're top class players, all of them. Yes. But one of the things they do every single year is they invite a guest uh, musician to write a piece specifically for the week. And I've done a few things like that before, but I've never had to deal with, um, it must have been about 150 students, yes. all in the same room, all at the same time, and uh, you just have to go for it. It's, yes. it's quite a bonkers thing to take on, but it's really fabulous thing to do. And then to hear something played like that at the end of the week is amazing, absolutely yes. amazing. It, it was amazing. And in actual fact, we have two of the students who were in that orchestra. Ooh. We will hear them in, 
in a few m moments, uh, Isaac Scanlon and Paddy Farrell. Very good. Yeah. You also teach at the University of Limerick as well. I do. I teach at uh, Limerick. I also teach on the folk degree course in Newcastle and at Helsinki as well. And when I was young, there was no such thing as a folk degree course or traditional music degree course at all. And it's fantastic. These are all up and around. And Limerick particularly is quite amazing for the number of brilliant musicians but who are also performers they bring in yes so they get you know they get frankie gavin and donald lunny and and breach harper and all these amazing people so that they don't only get the very best tutors who play music at its very best but they also get it from a performance perspective and that that's quite a different thing playing music yes. for performance is a different thing for playing music for fun in sessions and all that stuff and where i'm where i come from all of the music i play originates in dance music Yes. So it's a funny thing to think about. You're playing dance music for people sitting down. Whereas before, this music was always played because there was a dance going on, except, of course, the songs and the slow airs. But yes. even in a house dance, you would be the musicians who would have to play lively, keep the beats, get, and, and make people want to get up and dance. Yes. And that function's changed now because the performance isn't like that. So it's interesting. It's an interesting thing. It is. And you have another set of tunes for me. I do. Yes, I do. What are you going to play for me this time? Well, I'm going to play a tune. My, my dad is 84. Yes. My mother, as I said, was from Ballybunion, County Kerry. My dad is from Wilsdon. And uh, he's um, still going strong. And he goes dancing four nights a week. Right. And a few years ago, he said to me, I was driving. We were driving back from Cornwall, actually. And he said to me, uh, Karen, he said, I want to ask you a favour. And I said, oh, yeah, Dad, what's that? And he said, will you write my funeral tune? And I nearly crashed the car. And uh, so I said, um are you thinking of leaving soon? And he said, no, he said, but I like the tunes you write. And while I do believe there's an afterlife, just in case I want to hear it before I go, you know, which is a lovely thing to do, actually. It's quite a pragmatic thing to do. Yes. And, uh, but it's hard to write a tune like that in a way. So I went about it by thinking, what, what was his favourite tune when I was young? And his all-time favourite tune was Boule of Vogue, you know. Okay, and he would always sing that. And uh, so I thought, okay, so could I nick a bit from Boule of Vogue? So I thought, what's my favourite phrase in Boule of Vogue? So the, the phrase I liked in Boule of Vogue was... That. So that became the start of the tune. So this is called Ted R. Tweedy. He hasn't died yet. He's still going strong. Um, but I'd like to dedicate it to his brother who died recently, Johnny Tweed, and uh, who used to work on the dust carts with Paddy Hayes, a fantastic box player who I knew from London many years ago. So here we go. Thank you. 
Isaac Scanlon is from Ballyhays in County Cavan and he's a member of the Milltown Cultus Group and Paddy Farrell is from Legan in County Longford. You're very welcome to the Cozy Corner. Right, thank you. And um, you, both of you were in Mehel when Karen was uh, doing the orchestra. Yeah, we were in the orchestra and we enjoyed it a lot. And you're going to play uh, a couple of reels for me tonight, I believe. Yeah, I'm going to be playing a G minor reel that I haven't got the name of and another reel called The Flying Clog. <laughs> Thank you. 
wonderful playing there from 12-year-old Leila Noon from Edristown. Leila, you're very welcome to the Cozy Corner. Thank you very much. That was a beautiful tune. What is it? Uh, it's called Kilty Town Reel. And Leila, who's your fiddle teacher? Um, my fiddle teacher is Anya Nirahali in Banlacargi. But you play other instruments as well, don't you? Yeah, I play the banjo and I play the tin whistle. Right, and who teaches you the banjo? Uh, Joe Kinnear. And you're also going to sing for me tonight, Leila. What, yeah. what are you going to sing? I'm going to sing the Night Visiting Song. OK, thank you, Leila. I must away now I can no longer tarry This morning's tempest I have to cross I must be guided Without a struggle into the arms I love the most And when he came To his true love's dwelling He knelt down gently Upon a stone And true lowly is my true lover within at home wake up wake up love it's thine own true lover wake up wake up love and let me in Tired love and oh so weary And almost nearly drenched to the skin She raised her off her down soft pillow She's raised her up and she's left him in and they were locked in each other's arms until that long night was past and gone and when that long night was past and over and when the small clouds began to grow, he's taken her hand and they've kissed and parted. Then he saddled and mounted and away did go. I must away now. I can no longer tarry This morning's tempest I have to cross I must be guided Without a stumble Into the Into the arms I love the most. The very talented Leela Noon from Edwardstown. Karen, I have seen you play with Tim Eady. <laughs> was it on YouTube? Yes, it yeah. was. That was. That's an amazing clip. Um, I had been teaching at a weekend next door to Tim Eady. And he'd been taking all the guitarist, and I'd been taking all the accordionist. And I just said to him one lunchtime, why don't we swap classes? Or uh, why don't you, I teach my accordionist how to back an O'Carolan tune, and you can teach your guitarist the melody, because it's a different way of looking at things. Most guitarists think they're just the backers, you know. So we did that. And then one of them said to us, one of the students at the end, said, would we mind playing a tune together? 
And we said, no problem. So I purposely tried to think of tunes that Tim hadn't heard before. And as you see on that YouTube clip, it doesn't faze him at all. He's, he's so yeah. intuitive and he's an amazing, amazing, amazing guitarist. And, yes. it, and he's a lot of fun. Yes. He's great fun. And he loves a challenge. So it was, it, was, it was great crack. And of course, what happens, and it's exactly what happens here in Longford for me, is that when you play with someone like Tim, he makes you play better. You want to play better. You want to reach those heights. And because you want to do that, then he wants, you know, wants yes. to get higher as well. And it's, it's a lovely, lovely feeling. And that's exactly what I feel about the sessions in Longford that I go to. Right. Well, tell me a little bit about those sessions. Well, when I first moved here, the first place I went to was the Tally Ho Bar in Longford, where we met Martino Murray and um, Noel Sweeney and Donna McCann. And that was a lovely session. Pat Finity and... Uh, then from there, we started going to the Camlin Bar in Clondra, where I now live, and playing with Jimmy Brehney. And then we met Jimmy McLaughlin here and uh, Johnny Bones, Johnny King, the Baron player. And there's so many great musicians and great singers around here. But what's really lovely, and this is a lot to do with Noel Sweeney, I have to say I'm a big Noel Sweeney fan, is that... Um, a lot of good tunes get played, a lot of, you know, t Jimmy has an amazing selection of what we call sneaky tunes, tunes that you wouldn't normally hear, the Paddy Fahey tunes, the old tunes, you know, that are really beautiful in minor keys and so on. And Noel has a great radar to make sure that everybody feels included. So you have a great repertoire of the old tunes. Yes. And you also have, he'll, and he'll also just take the session down a wee bit, just so that he'll always see if someone hasn't quite joined in for a while, get them to sing a song, play a few tunes a bit slower. And the, and the sessions have been going up and up and up. And every Sunday night now we're playing at um, the Life Belt Bar Roses in Bally League. Right. And that session last week was unbelievable, unbelievable. And uh, Nuala Donlan was, came in and, I, you know, it's just amazing. And what I was talking to you about earlier was when I used to come to the Flowers when I was a teenager, I often used to bump into Seamus and Sean Thompson. And we were looking at photos the other day, and I've got some really young photographs of those two boys. And when I moved to Longford, for some reason it didn't click, because I knew they were from Longford, it didn't click. And then we walked into this, the Longford Arms on one Friday night, and there were Sean and James Dobson, and, and we couldn't believe it. And we worked out the last time we'd seen each other was about 31 years ago. It was amazing. But these people are all still playing, and there's loads of other Longford musicians I've yet to meet. But I have to say, of all the places I've played sessions, and there's been a few, these take the biscuit. They're just unbelievable the standard is great but it's very inclusive and you don't get that everywhere right so yourself and jim are going to play me a set of tunes now we are aren't we, Jimmy? Yep. Yeah. and the first um okay. the first tune is from paddy hayes we don't know if he wrote it or if he or if, where he got it from but it's a beautiful tune anyway yeah, it's a lovely tune, yeah. and then the next three are from um, peter carberry who is a local musician as well so and i got them off jim um, he's he's really building up my repertoire now <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
truly amazing and Ireland's best kept secret. You know, wonderful music composed there by a Longford man, um, Peter Carberry, the famous piper. He's actually playing a box player and a, 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 a banjo player. A That's right. Yeah. Well, we don't know if he composed them, but he certainly is the only person I've ever heard playing them anyway. And for you, the same, yeah, eh, Jimmy? Yeah, yeah. So it wouldn't surprise me now if he did compose them. Right. <laughs> and um, But there are a number of musicians who actually have composed wonderful tunes. No, absolutely. And just because I'm... Um, not the shyest person in the world, shall we say. When I first came here, my partner, Tom McElvogue, he's a great tunes writer. And there's this thing that we all have that you always think your tunes are going to be rubbish and you don't really want to play them in a session because it's a bit embarrassing and all that stuff. So I just go and learn the tunes and, I'm, and then I play them in a session so then they have to play them, you know. Yes. But by doing that... Um, I started to find out that other people had composed. So the first two tunes I played on the programme tonight, the first one was from Noel Sweeney. He's written some amazing tunes, Noel, the flute player from Longford. Yes. And uh, also Sean Thompson, Seamus Thompson, they all write tunes. And I think Michael Lennon's now writing tunes as well. So it's, it's fantastic that we've got this whole Longford tune thing going on. And the, one of the first tunes I ever learned was the Longford Collector. So I always had that in my mind, that this Longford Collector, whoever that was, was a collector of tunes. And a friend of mine recently said, um, did it not make you think of a tax collector? And I thought, why would you write a tune about a tax collector? <laughs> yeah, it's mad. But there are new tunes being written, and it's not for us to worry if they're good enough. If they're good enough, they'll get played, and if they're not, you'll soon find out, you know. Right. But uh, it's, it's an amazing heritage that Longford has, and I'm up for telling everybody about it. Yes. Well, sadly, Karen, this brings this week's episode of The Cozy Corner to a close. It has been an absolute pleasure talking to you and Jim, it has been wonderful having you as well. To those of you who have been watching, thank you. And I hope that you'll be able to join us next week for another episode of The Cozy Corner. Karen, you have a set of tunes to play us out with. I do. That's grand. And I would also like to say thank you very, very much for putting this all together. And I think your idea is to have this as a little archive or the start of another archive in Longford is fantastic. And I hope other counties do the same to show that there's great music all over Ireland, not in just a couple of places. And that's really nice, really, really nice. So thank you very much. Right. Thank you. Thank you.
so he got me into kind of Irish music and I was in a marching band and then I went to classical lessons and then I went to my main teacher which was a guy called John Whelan who's a great button accordion player right. now living in the States and he, he really revolutionised my music but before all of that when I was, that was, I started playing the accordion when I was 11, but when I was seven, I had right. uh, an interesting and lovely, lovely music teacher at school who was called Ken Davis. He was Welsh and he really didn't want me to play the piano. So he taught me the melodica. Right. So I started on the melodica and the melodica, it's the same plane as, as playing a, a piano accordion keyboard. So when I then, my sister got an accordion first and I saw it, I thought I've got to have that instrument because she was older than me, you know, sibling rivalry. Right. And um, You've taken it along. I have, yeah. Shall I play you? Mm, yes, a yes, on it? please. Now do. they have a terrible reputation of sounding terrible, yes. which they do. And, uh, but they're fantastic for learning tunes and, they've, and they're a lot lighter than those things. So. Right. As you can hear. So anyway, um, what should we play? Well, I have to say, Karen, that's a first for the cosy corner. <laughs> but they're a great instrument because they teach you keyboard skills yes. and uh, they teach you breathing and phrasing because if you breathe in the wrong places, you lose the tune. And it made me really listen a lot to flute players and pipers and concertina players and listen to where they were taking the breaks in the phrasing, you know. So then you get it on the accordion with the bellows. Yes. Well, speaking of teaching... I first was introduced to you, Karen, down in Limerick. You teach in Mehel, the summer school for students. Um, and I have to say, you had a beautiful orchestral piece which you arranged. That's a few years ago. It's a few years ago, and, and Gary Shannon, who runs it, Fair Play to him, he's, and Ernestine Healy and all the, all the crew down there, they have a fantastic summer school, and the kids are absolutely amazing. They're top-class players, all of them. Yes. But one of the things they do every single year is they invite a guest uh, musician to write a piece specifically for the week. And I've done a few things like that before, but I've never had to deal with, um, it must have been about 150 students, yes. all in the same room, all at the same time, and uh, you just have to go for it. It's, yes. it's quite a bonkers thing to take on, but it's really fabulous thing to do. And then to hear something played like that at the end of the week is amazing, absolutely yes. amazing. It and he said to me, uh, Karen, he said, I want to ask you a favour. And I said, oh yeah, Dad, what's that? And he said, will you write my funeral tune? And I nearly crashed the car. And uh, so I said, um, are you thinking of leaving soon? And he said, no. He said, but I like the tunes you write. And while I do believe there's an afterlife, just in case, I want to hear it before I go. You know, which is a lovely thing to do, actually. It's quite a pragmatic thing to do. Yes. And, uh, but it's hard to write a tune like that, in a way. So I went about it by thinking, what, what was his favourite tune when I was young? And his all-time favourite tune was Boule of Oak, you know. Right. Um, Okay, and he would always sing that. And uh, so I thought, okay, so could I nick a bit from Boule of Vogue? So I thought, what's my favourite phrase in Boule of Vogue? So the phrase I liked in Boule of Vogue was... That. So that became the start of the tune. So this is called Tedar Tweedy. He hasn't died yet. He's still going strong. Um, but I'd like to dedicate it to his brother who died recently, Johnny Tweed, and uh, who used to work on the dust carts with Paddy Hayes, a fantastic box player who I knew from London many years ago. So here we go. Thank you. 
Isaac Scanlon is from Ballyhays in County Cavan and he's a member of the Milltown Cultus Group and Paddy Farrell is from Legan in County Longford. You're very welcome to the Cozy Corner. Right, thank you. And um, you, both of you were in Mehel when Karen was uh, doing the orchestra. Yeah, we were in the orchestra and we enjoyed it a lot. And you're going to play uh, a couple of reels for me tonight, I believe. Yeah, I'm going to be playing a G minor reel that I haven't got the name of and uh, another reel called The Flying Clog. <laughs> about it by thinking what what was his favorite tune when I was young and his all-time favorite tune was Boule of Oak you know right. um, okay and he would always sing that and uh, so I thought okay so could I nick a bit from Boule of Oak so I thought what's my favorite phrase in Boule of Oak so the phrase I liked in Boule of Oak was that so that became the start of the tune so this is called Ted R Tweedy he hasn't died yet He's still going strong, um, but I'd like to dedicate it to his brother who died recently, Johnny Tweed, and uh, who used to work on the dust carts with Paddy Hayes, a fantastic box player who I knew from London many years ago. So here we go.
truly amazing and Ireland's best kept secret. You know, wonderful music composed there by a Longford man, um, Peter Carberry, the famous piper. He's actually playing a box player and oh, a, a, a banjo player. A, a That's right. Player, yeah. Well, we don't player. know if he composed them, but he certainly is the only person I've ever heard playing them anyway. And for you, the same, yeah, eh, Jimmy? He would have, yeah, he would so it wouldn't surprise me now if he did compose them. Right. <laughs> and. Um, And when that love 
began to grow. He's taken her hand and they've kissed and parted. Then he saddled and mounted and away did go. I must away now, I can no longer tarry. This morning's tempest I have to cross. I must be guided without a stirred love. And oh so weary And almost nearly drenched to the skin She raised her off Her down soft pillow She's raised her up And she's let him in Until that long night was past and gone And when that long night was past and over And when the small clouds began to grow He's taken her hand and parted then he saddled and mounted and away did go I must away now I can no longer tarry this morning's tempest I have to cross a stumble into the arms I love the most into the arms I love the most The very talented Leela Noon from Edwardstown Karen, I have seen you play with Tim Eady. <laughs> was it on YouTube? Yes, it yeah. was. That was. That's an amazing clip. Um, I had been teaching at a weekend next door to Tim Eady and he'd been taking all the guitarists and I'd been taking all the accordionists and I just said to him one lunchtime, why don't we swap classes or uh, why don't you, I teach my accordionist how to back an O'Carolan tune and you can teach your guitarist the melody because it's a different way of looking at things. Most guitarists think they're, they're just the backers, you know. So we did that and then one of them said to us, one of the students at the end, said, would we mind playing a tune together? And we said, no problem. So I purposely tried to think of tunes that Tim hadn't heard before. And as you see on that YouTube clip, it doesn't phase him at all. He's, he's so yeah. intuitive.